sponsored by Squarespace. This is cheap food under $2 that Japanese people actually eat in izakaya restaurants in Japan. So a lot of you commented that you liked my video about food under $5 at a Japanese food court. So today I'm taking you inside of a Japanese izakaya and sharing with you food that Japanese people actually order all under $2. So relatively speaking, this is ultra cheap food. So not all izakayas have these prices, but the cool people at Bampaya here in Tokyo have just the menu to meet the requirements. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description if you guys are interested in coming here. Like always, before I start, if you want to see what I'm doing, on the daily check out my instagram account if you want to help with the channel check out the japan merch and if you have any questions about japan or japan travels check out my discord community all right let's get a cheap izakaya food on for the uninitiated izakayas are known as japan's drinking restaurants but it's a lot different from standard western bars and pubs people go here to drink but also to enjoy a wide selection of food served in small dishes so you can get your drink on but not completely fill your stomach on food and japanese love it today i'm at the bampaya musashi koyama store to give you a quick breakdown on some older Japanese food that's oh so good but won't break the bank. So here we are inside. I finally made it. There's just so much food that I want to show you today. So let's begin. Number one, Chikwa no Isobe Age. Fried fish cake coated with a seaweed tempura batter. So this one definitely has that fried loveliness written all over it. This is Chikwa on the inside. Again, it's kind of like a fish cake. The Isobe Age itself uses like a seaweed seaweed and fried batter. So you often see isobe age with seafood and fish cake. And, and for Japanese itself, like the word isobe means beachside with a lot of rocks to it. And looking at this itself, you can see it kind of feels like maybe the ocean and having like a rough rocky beach. Definitely not a sandy beach. You can put soy sauce on it, so let's do that. Boom. Cheers everyone. Wow. Because of the chikawa itself, it's a little bit sweet. Then you have a tempura crispiness to the outside. And then on top, it has aonori, which is a seaweed, kind of like a bitter seaweed taste to it. Oh, but it is so nice. And then just having that soy sauce on there, it adds a little bit of savoriness to it. You cannot beat this with this rice. Just love it. Number two, ankimo, monkfish liver. This one here is ankimo, which is monkfish liver, also known as fogwa of the sea. This is definitely probably something that not a lot of foreigners order or even probably know about, but this is a very, very common Japanese dish. First of all, you have onions here, you have some seaweed on the side, and then you have the monkfish liver right there. I prefer to use some ponzu, this guy right here. Basically, it's kind of like a huge and vinegar mix. Is it kind of like that spritey, tangy, refreshing taste? Just throw it on a little bit like so. Now, take a little bite of this guy. Mmm. Wow, that is such an interesting texture and flavor. It definitely has kind of like a rich taste to it. It melts right in your mouth. It has like a really smooth texture. But the most interesting thing about it is that it doesn't have like a lot of taste. It does have like a little bit of a fishy taste, but that's why you put soy sauce on it or you put ponzo on it just to give it that extra flavor. And washing it down with some sake or even beer is probably like the best way to eat this. I, mean, I can definitely see why they call it the fogua of the sea. It does kind of resemble fogua. The difference to it though is that it's not as oily as foie gras. And to be fair, ankimo is one of those things I never really ordered when I first came to Japan because I really didn't know about it. But there's a lot of food that Japanese people order on the regular that, you know, foreigners that come here for the first time or maybe even several times or even live here for a few years don't get to experience. So again, this is why we're doing this video so I can show you when you come here that you can eat real Japanese food, have that Japanese taste and not break the bank. Number three, Age Shioginan, fried salted ginkgo nuts. Definitely a fall seasonal specialty. So here we go with the Age Sho Ginnan. Have you ever been to Japan and you walked um, in a park that has lots of ginkgo trees? It has a very, very like strong, not very pleasant smell, but when they cook it like this, it takes away a lot of that smell. It does have the salt right here in front. Just dip it into the salt like so. Take a bite. Mm. This is like the perfect drinking snack. In terms of like 
texture. It's kind of similar to edamame, it's like a bean, but it has kind of like a bouncier, kind of more chewy texture than edamame. It has like a, a stickiness to it as well. Definitely does have like a little bit of a bitter taste to it. That's like another reason why people like eating it when they're drinking is because it pairs really well with alcohol. It's super light. It's one of those like things that you order in the beginning. It gives you something to chew on while you're drinking, while you're like talking to friends. One thing though, a lot of Japanese people know of, maybe a lot of foreigners don't know about visiting the country is that ginkgo, if you eat too much of it, it can make you sick. So you do have to be careful. You don't want to eat too much of this, but again, something different than what you would normally order. Number four, motsuni, intestine stew. Motsuni komi is actually one of my favorite things to order in izakaya. Basically, nikomi means stew, and then motsu means intestines. So as you can see, there's like all sorts of different things in here, daikon radish, onions, and then you also have some tofu. Throw some peppers before I start. Give it a little bit more kick. So much flavor, very, very savory soup. It has just different textures of all the intestines, as you can see right here. Basically, the stew, like all of the meat, the tofu, all the ingredients is slowly cooked for many hours. Everything like picks up all of that miso flavor and it makes it sweet and juicy. You can see even in this tofu, it's not just like a white tofu, but it's really like darkened by the miso. It's definitely perfect for winter months. Number five, natto omelet. Oh, you can definitely smell the natto, which is a fermented bean. Basically, this is your regular omelet that you probably eat at home, but it does have natto in it, which makes it a very Japanese dish that not a lot of foreigners or people visiting Japan would order. But in fact, it's one of those homemade dishes that gets very, very Japanese. Whoa, look at that drip. Take a bite. That is so fluffy. What I just love about when you mix natto in a dish like this, it just takes away, sometimes like natto is really, really strong. It really mellows it out and just adds another kind of gooey texture to the omelet. In fact, there are many different versions of the recipe for natto omelet. You can add cheese, shiso, mayo, green onions. The list is endless. Throw the peppers on just like this, just to give it a little bit of that spicy kick. You know what I'm saying? I love that spicy kick, so. Oh, that looks great. If you want, you can also add some soy sauce to it, just like that. Mm. So again, if you want to try natto for the first time and you do like omelets, then this is actually not a bad bet because it just makes that natto not so strong and it's just so easy with the egg omelet. So before we continue on, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor for this video, Squarespace. If y'all don't already know, Squarespace is the number one way to build your online presence. In fact, I use Squarespace to build my website, Tokyo Zebra. Here are just some of the reasons why I love using Squarespace so much. Whether you're starting your passion project or building a business, Squarespace has all the tools to get it done while also looking ultra sleek and professional at the same time. They support numerous portfolios and gallery designs which you can customize and even password protect so the right people see your work. Use its fully integrated blogging tools and commenting features such as threaded comments, replies, and likes to help engage your community. And my favorite, built-in analytics to see how your visits, unique visitors, and page views trend over time. So go to squarespace.com today for your free trial when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Paolo from Tokyo and get 10% off your first domain or website. All right, let's continue on. Number six, Ita Wasa, fish cake with wasabi. Okay, so here we go. This is Ita Wasa. It is a Japanese kind of like fish cake served with wasabi. This is fish cake, it's called kamaboko. And what's interesting about it is that it's served on a wooden plate and then scrape the kamaboko off of it and then they chop it up and then they serve it with wasabi. And that's what we're having right now. Just take some wasabi right there, throw it on kamaboko. Wow, that wasabi will clear out your sinuses. That is a strong wasabi, wow. I generally like a kick to my food, so that'll get to the back of your throat, inside of your nasal cavity, and just wake you up. So the kamaboko itself, very, very kind of standard food item here in Japan. Just one of those like side dishes that you find in a lot of drinking restaurants, izakayas. Interestingly, like this whole dish originated with soba shops. They had a thing called soba mae. Soba mae is an old Edo culture to enjoy drinks while waiting for the soba to be served and itawasa was one of the appetizers served along with it back in the day. Um, now it's like you can find in all the izakayas and everything. Also throw some soy sauce as well. 
Mm, that is brilliant. I love it. It's simple. It's good. It's something that a lot of people don't order because they just probably don't know about it. But again, this is why we're here. Let me take you on to the next food item. Number seven, arajiru, fish soup. So this is arajiru and it's basically a soup made from the parts of the fish that you cut off or that you don't use. So you have the bones and the head and all the other remnants and you use all of that to make a soup like this. Um, obviously you have some onions as well. Oh, and it just smells so good. You can see the steam just coming from it. A lot of these izakayas, they go through so much fish. They just have so much remaining. Look at these like thick pieces of fish in there. I mean, like usually it doesn't have a lot of fish meat, but this place has a lot of fish meat. That is an umami explosion. Umami's over Baghdad right there. Such a deep and flavorful taste. The onions are pretty good too. Like if you take a bite of the fish, you can see the fish bones as well. Like so you have to be careful. The reason why I wanted to share this one is because you know, you have all of the, the lighter foods in the beginning. Then you have like things like the nikomi that is like a little bit heavier. And this is something that a lot of Japanese people will have at the end of the meal just to help like wash things down. At the end of the night, it's perfect. It'll help settle your stomach. Maybe, you know, since it does have a little bit of that saltiness, it'll probably help you rehydrate a little bit for maybe drinking too much and just like a perfect way to finish things off. Number eight, hamukatsu, ham cutlet. Okay, so I know this one and the next one are just a bit over $2, but but I love them so much that I had to share. All right, y'all, so now I'm bringing one of the hardest hitters out there, the hamakatsu. Basically, you have ham and then you have panko on the outside. They give you some mustard and some cabbage with it. I feel like there are Western versions of this. I personally like to throw some of this sauce on here. It makes it a little bit sweeter. Oh, there we go. Put a little bit of sauce on there. Maybe put a little bit of mustard on there. And just take the first crispy bite. That is just phenomenal. This place uses like one piece of ham, but sometimes you also get several slices of ham as well, depending on the izakaya you go to. But it's not gonna be this thick, it's gonna be like two or three thin slices of ham. In fact, um, a lot of people here in Japan, when they think of hamkatsu, it's like a very, very like nostalgic dish. It's one of those post-war foods that if you didn't have a lot of money back in the day, this is what you would make, because it only just took breadcrumbs and ham, you fry it. And that's when like a lot of the Western influences started coming into Japan. Can you beat fried food like this? I don't know. It is so delicious. And number nine, Maguro Yamakake. Tuna sashimi with grated yam topping. So basically it is like a tuna sashimi and on top of it, it has a grated yam. And then you take soy sauce, drip it on top like you would normally do. The yam itself, as you can see, has kind of like a gooey and a slimy texture. But the reason why it's really nice with sashimi is that when you pair it with the soy sauce, it picks up a lot of that soy sauce flavor to it. You have the sashimi right there and then you have the yams coated with a soy sauce. Take a bite. Mm. Again, another Japanese dish, just adding a little bit more texture than something that you probably normally have. In Western countries, everyone is familiar with sashimi, and that's what a lot of people will order, but they probably don't venture off and go with a grated yam on top. More than likely, um, I would assume you haven't had the grated yam because when I first came to Japan, I don't remember having it myself. So again, a lot of this is based on my experience. Overall, it's good for your health, it's easy on the stomach, and it's good for your skin. So that's why a lot of Japanese like having it. So there you go. Those are some cheap foods under $2 that you can get at a Japanese izakaya that Japanese people actually order. Let me know what you thought in the comments. If you guys like this video, like always, help me out and hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos like this or anything related to Japan, hit that subscribe button and the bell button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.